Good morning, everyone. Good morning. I asked uh, last week, uh, Jeanette, if I could share a turning point in my life. Um, and she asked if I'd also do the unity prayer also. So, um, so a little bit about myself. I'm 55 years old. I've been married 27 years. <laughs> 26, 27. Two grown children. Um, born in Rhode Island, we moved to Grand Prairie when I was five. I grew up in Grand Prairie, went in the Army for a couple of years, came home, back to Arlington, did some college. Pretty much been here all my life. Um, I was raised a Catholic. My father, devout Catholic. I'm the youngest of six children. My mom, my mom not so much devout. But uh, when we came to tech, we would go to church. But I never really, it, it's not like Baptist. Uh, Protestant religions where there's Bible class and uh, kids class and such. I never really learned much about the Bible. We would just go to church, sit through service, come home. It's pretty boring. When I was about 11 or 12, uh, my mom didn't want to go anymore, and she didn't make me go anymore. So my dad went, but I didn't have to go. I didn't want to go. But as I entered my 20s, I moved away from home. You know, I got back from the Army, got out on my own. I, I knew there was something missing that I needed. But I didn't know what. Um, pick, bought a Bible, tried to read it, started in, uh, what was it, Numbers? <laughs> <I don't, laughs> who begot who and who begot what? It's like, okay, I don't understand this. So, um, like I said, I grew up here in, Ar- I grew up in Arlington, walking through Six Flags Mall one day. Uh, I don't know if you remember, before Barnes & Noble, there was a B. Dalton Booksellers. And uh, out in, before you walk in, they had a big table of discount books and such. So I was just walking. I wasn't really thinking much. I was in my early 20s. Picked up this book, Risky Living. It was back in the 80s. Um, it says, Keys to Inner Healing. And y'all in religious circles may, under, may know Jamie Buckingham, the, uh, the uh, author. Not sure. He's written other books. Um, but, uh, you know, I wasn't really sure what I was doing with my life. Uh, didn't know where I wanted to go. I was doing some college, but didn't know what. Just trying to figure myself out like most people in their 20s. And it didn't really say anything about religion. Just, you know, do you have problems in life? Do you, you know, have trouble with your parents? Do you have trouble with your boss? Where does that all lead to? Well, I'll tell you, the book was great. This was a turning point. Um, most of the book is about recognizing problems in your life. And then through prayer and introspection, trying to figure out where that came from, where the source is, and then praying about finding the healing, whether it's forgiveness or just, you know, forgiving yourself or forgiving others. Two things I learned out of this book. Before I was a Christian, I learned how to be a Christian. And one of them was, um, don't judge. So he relates stories of of his own situations. And one of them was... uh, I'm going to read this about, uh, he was at a, a service, and there were a couple of older guys playing up on stage. Uh, I'll go ahead and read. Um, he, was about to do a, he was about to go up and speak be after these gentlemen, but he was trying to get his thoughts together. The two men, both of, both of them well in their retirement years, were accompanying themselves musically. One was playing a guitar, the other a banjo with only three strings. One string had been missing for a year, he apologized, and the other had just broken when he was trying to tune the instrument before the meeting. To make matters worse, the three remaining strings were out of tune, but so was the guitar, so it didn't make much difference. After some preliminary plunking and strumming, trying to get the instruments in tune, the men gave up and began to sing, when they ring those golden bells for you and me. It was bad. They started... (laughs) One of, them start, one of them singing lead and the other tenor and then stopped. They decided to change parts and start again, <laughs> this time with both of them singing lead. Finally, after an embarrassing exchange of comments over who was singing which part, they began a third time, both of them singing tenor. Undauntedly, they painfully strummed and plucked their way through the verse. I couldn't believe what I was hearing. I shuddered, embarrassed for them, embarrassed for the visitors present, and mortified that I was being identified with it all because he was about to go up and speak. I tried to close my ears, yet the old man went on. God help us, I moaned inwardly. Then, just as, a, as clear 
as the sound of those golden bells the old men were singing about, he answered me in a deep place in my heart. You think that sounds pretty awful, don't you? Oh, God, you know, I groaned. Would you like to know what I think about it? I'll tell you a lot in this book he speaks with God or hears that inner voice and speaks with it. I felt the hair begin to rise on the back of my neck. I had the feeling that I ventured out into an area where I absolutely had no business being. I was afraid to answer. Excuse me. It didn't make any difference what I thought. He told me anyway, those are two of my choicest saints. They stand and sing, knowing their voices are cracked and their instruments are out of tune because they love me. They are singing to my glory, and I have commanded all the angels in heaven to be quiet so I can hear them. He knew he was out of line. Jamie did, and realized that it doesn't matter what they sounded like. They were glorifying him, and that's what was important. That helped me learn not how, how, to, not, how to not judge people, because I don't know what they're doing. I don't understand it. It's not for me to understand. If they're glorifying him in some way, it's great. The other was about forgiveness. It's a big book about forgiveness. And that, uh, you know, one of his stories was that he was cheated by an auto mechanic when he was younger. You know, when he finally got to where he was going, uh, a friend looked at the car and said, no, that guy just, you know, you, you paid $40 worth of screw adjustments. He didn't put a new carburetor in your car. So uh, he held that grudge for years. Every time he passed that, uh, that mechanic shop on the way to college, he held it for a grudge and, you know, cursed the the mechanic under his breath. Later in life, though, as he entered, became more of a Christian, he tried to understand and searching for the healing and the forgiveness, he thought, well, how do I forgive someone who's who's dead? You know, the mechanic had passed away, the shop was no longer there, how do I forgive someone who's passed away and gone? And that's when he realized that, uh, and, you know, in the book he says, uh, let's see, How can I forgive when the garage is gone and the owner dead? Well, in the kingdom of God, there is no time limitation. God, who lives in an entirely different dimension from us, is just as much as part of the past as he is of the present. The Bible says Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He is not part of the earthly kingdom, which is limited by calendars, watches, yesterdays, and tomorrows. It is just, easy, just as easy for Jesus Christ to reach back into the past and bring forgiveness as it is for today. And so he realized that while he was being cheated by that, by that mechanic, Jesus was there asking God, forgive him, for he knows not what he does. So Jesus forgave him. So Jamie found it in his heart to forgive him also, using God's love, realizing that, you know, it is timeless. And it's just little things like that. Like I say, this was a turning point for me. I, I, before I knew I was a Christian, God knew I was a Christian. And I think he was pointing me in the right direction. I think that's what the turning points are to me. Knowing God will know where we'll be. Jesus will get us there. They know that, maybe even if we don't know it. So, again, I just wanted to share that, that turning point with me. It's, it's old, it's worn, it's stained, but I love this book. Thank you for listening.